No, we, we do have some questions, but she said you will. You have like an opening statement you'd like to make. Uh, before we get started, I think we probably should go around the table once uh, for introductions. Yeah. I'm Wally Haas, editorial page editor. I'm Mary Call, I'm the assistant editorial page editor. I'm Doug Gatz, I'm the managing editor. I'm Matt Trober, the assistant sports editor. Linda Cunningham, editor of the Register Star. Chuck Sweeney, senior editor. Bob Trojan, I'm a community member. Scott Bowers, publisher. Tom Ross, the general manager. It's not editors here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Pam. I'm Pam Hillenbrand. I'm pastor at Emanuel Episcopal Church, downtown Rockford. Well, thank you. I was anxious to meet with you to give you some sense of what we see and feel. Um, we began receiving calls from the past so shortly after the shooting last week and talking with them about what and how to do because it was so tense and explosive. I would have come in early except Ted Kennedy's funeral had to go to Boston and work that through. And I wanted to meet with the cross-section citizens. Um, we met with leadership. Sundays, you know, two churches on Sunday. Mrs. Brown, her daughter. Uh, today we met with students and officials at the school board and school was at Jefferson. Just now about 80 ministers, a broad ecumenical body of ministers who have great concerns with you. Later today, a leadership meeting, and then tonight, the town hall meeting, and then some future action. My first sense is that uh, this is a very tense situation. And the part of our concern was how to steer it towards some productive conclusion, how to turn the pain into some uh, power, some leverage to bring about the change that has created such alienation between the West Side and the rest of Rockford. Um, uh, there is the broader context, number one unemployment in the state in Rockford. There's the issue, therefore, of economic inadequacy as we are in the larger picture closing plants uh, here and sending jobs abroad. All the companies building out of their responsibility through bankruptcy and then getting stimulus is a, is a bigger, broader issue of question. We've lost 8 million jobs in the last 18 months. And four and a half million we've been home foreclosure this year. We were in Atlanta just yesterday on this issue of home foreclosure. The role of the feds, the role of the banks. 100 million again student loan debt. And now escalating violence. And the poverty factors began to manifest itself in the behavior of our children. So there's this bigger question of of a stimulus to address the issue of job hemorrhaging. We're losing more jobs than we're creating. We're losing more houses than we're modifying through foreclosure. Student loan is, is out of control. So it's kind of that's the bigger issue, trying to mobilize people from Belvedere and back around to address those agenda items. And there's particulars of the disparities between Rockford's black and brown population and his lack of representation in the police department and fire department and paramedics and judges and infant mortality and short life expectancy. There is there are these disparities which are measurable disparities that must be addressed if there has to be some wholeness. There's an absence of services and servants, issues as sensitive as the library issue, for example. Uh, a lack of representation in the higher ranks of police and fire departments. So people feel that they're under occupation. Um, and there are those who feel so alienated they have no, no stake in the ongoing. They uh, jump up and touch the basement. They're already really, really down. And so they need some concentrated, focused support. 
because their pain has just been illuminated in this crisis, but the pain is, is very deep. Lastly, oh, I went to see Marcus's body Sunday. So I was trying to call you in that first minute. And I wanted to see for myself there's three gaping holes in his back. One that grazed his neck. Then I well, left and Mrs. Brown and her daughter. She was treated as a suspect, not as a witness. Um, she knew Marcus. Uh, her and her daughter was, she just talked with her, the minister a few months ago. She talked with him. He had some altercation with his girlfriend or something. And she was telling him how to process that. She went to church, she came in behind them. Then she saw police coming. And he started to run out of fear. And they came in the church, in the sanctuary, uninvited. To me, that was the first breakdown. And they chased him down the hall. There's a toddler's room, if you've not seen it, with toddlers in sleep. One police came and gone out, and the baby saw him, and they started screaming. Police had the gun out, and they were with the babies. Meantime, Mark had to run down the hall. Some eight year old was on the way across to the other with a puzzle, looking for a puzzle. So the guy went that way. So the police ran that way because they yelled. Said he ran down in the boiler, and um, when they were out, said come out. She was saying, "Let me get the babies out the way first, because they still had the guns out." He came out as a witness. She said he came out with head down and hands up, and she and the daughter saw the shots ring out. First hit him in the neck and spun him around. That's when he hit the floor. And she saw him shot, standing over him. And then drug him across the floor, and he finished bleeding to death. That's the raw uh, witness report. Some gap ultimately between that and the police report, but that's what the witnesses saw. So it's source of great pain. Uh, we hope that there'll be a Department of Justice investigation. It is a civil rights case. It would be a thorough investigation that's credible. Uh, and um, in the meantime, it puts a great burden upon the city's leadership to steer people away from the anguish and the pain. It's a great source of grievance. How should they do that? How do you think our mayor and our police chief have uh, responded to this at this point? You know, Mr. Brown, Reverend Brown said, uh, Mr. Mayor, you've not called me to offer any apology or condolence. You've not visited the church. The mayor said, well, I am trying to balance your feeling with the police. Well, that's not leadership. Um, the, the, the pastor and his wife deserve a call of condolence and the the visitation to see what happened. So it's not a judgment that is sensitive to the scene. Clearly, the police did something that was out of order, reason why they're on leave, but with pay. And then the kind of balancing act between trying to keep the police with their sense of group protection and the people, that uh, that neutral position, I think, deserves um, more direction. Reverend Jackson, just as a point of order, the two police officers are on administrative leave with pay as a matter of policy. That's happened countless times. Um, that's So I don't know that given a long-standing policy in the sheriff's department as well as the police departments here, the putting after shooting, putting uh, officers on leave, I don't know that that's uh, a fair assessment to say it must mean there's a problem. And that's what I just heard you say. Well, if, if it is all right to go into a sanctuary, the church is a place of refuge. Um, often immigrants go in church in the refuge and police will not cross that line. The church is a place of refuge. 
That's the first issue. Went into a place of refuge, uninvited, 